Okay, so I've decided that instead of doing like project videos, I'm gonna try and start doing um, weekly vlogs just to keep up posting on the channel. So I'm gonna try and do big project videos. Um, you'll just see like progress versions of those projects. Um, and eventually I'm gonna post video essays again, I promise. Uh, I have a couple of videos in works. I just, I don't like the scripts anymore. I liked them when I read them and now I don't. I'm gonna stop swing. Uh, so let's get into this week's vlog. Uh, today we have, um, working on this sock coat which is initially going to be a big video but then I forgot to film the beginning of it and I just worked on a jacket or a, 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 a coat in the last video so um but yeah This is it. Uh, I need to start working on the sleeves. So we're gonna do mock-up. Uh, it's gonna be great because I'm pretty sure the sleeve pattern that I have and I like to use is for a 24 inch sleeve head. That is, I think, like a 20 inch sleeve head, 21 inches. Uh, so we're gonna see how that works. And the mock-up's also gonna be useful to pattern match. It has Speaking of the coat I just made. <laughs> I did not make this one. I got this after good. Let's keep working. Generally, you want to use a car that matches the color of your main full wool um, as best as you can. Uh, but I have, I just happen to have big ass scraps of black wool quad cloth, which is a wool felt, which is what that one is. Um, like, I've got this is a scrap from that last project, and then I also still have yardage. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> if you <laughs> if you have something to say about my welton not matching, I'm definitely not going to cut you with these because these these are nice these are nice shears. Uh, but we're cutting two by pieces. Uh, this will rock cross or the under color. Okay, so the back, and we're also gonna cut two bias pieces of. Canvas. Okay, we're switching, switching tasks because I have a order right now for a custom position. Person, I have to go. It's really interesting position. I actually got it several years ago. Back in 2020, um, pandemic happened. She already right, finished it. Uh, 
Hola, ¿qué tal? I got the under collar attached. Look at her. So at some point I need to put the, uh, the over collar on. Um, I might do that today. I need to make a bow tie too. Thick bow tie. Thick bow tie. Oh, real bow tie. Thick bow tie. Uh, means that I don't need to find a pattern because I can just make a sewn bow and just attach it to my hand. Who's gonna do something? Bottom, the uh, both the front and the back are on the fold. Um, search the edges. Um, the shirt fabric up here has been starched uh, with starch, spray starch. Um, and then I also put uh, some linen uh, dress canvas in the front. Yeah, just we're bind off, we're bound off with this red bias tape that I got from Joanne's. The strip or the straps were made, strap wise, and then they're just anchored in that back seam. Um, and then it's got a side zipper. Well, then side zipper so that she can get in and out. And then there will be buttons uh, right about here um, that won't really do much other than just the straps. Um, and then once I get the cuts and collar done, I'm going to send this off to her for her approval. Um, see if she uh, feels like it will stay up well enough. Uh, if not, then she'll send it back and she might take in the side. Uh, take it in or add some boning or something. Anyway. Um. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, oh wait. Cause she's sending me her neck and wrist measurements later. He has already sent me her wrist measurement, but that was like three years ago, so I'm gonna wait. I'm not trying to find it. So, we're going
our TD this weekend. Um, she's like, oh, let's listen to Fake Cure for a house. And he's like, no! I'm biased against the cure because the kid who told me the cure was good was an asshole. So I don't like the cure. You're missing out. <laughs> Okay, so if you've never made a stand collar like this before, there's four pieces. There's two pieces of the stand call stand, and then there's two pieces of the collar itself. First step is I'm going to sew center back seam on this one. I had to add it um, just to save fabric. Um, I won't have to like go way up in the fabric. Just cut it out of there, cut out some scraps, and then I will sew. This will be the under collar, this will be the over collar. Sew them to each other um, for the bit, and then we can sew it into the collar stand. Okay, gonna trim these corners, clip the curve. To the left. Twelve hops this time. Twelve hops this time. Okay. Next, why don't you hold up half an inch along this bottom edge of these? Um, because this is gonna make it easier later when we need to like hem this. Um, if you are putting this into a shirt, you may only fold up the edge of one of these on the like interior part of the collar stand uh, and then the other part we get the seam stitched into the collar hole um, but we're not putting this into a shirt this is just going to be the edge and you may be thinking my boy why don't you just like because like I fold it up I sew it and then I flip it out and I'm going to fold it out you may be thinking like my guy why don't you just um so the right sides to right sides and then stitch stitch around leaving a little hole so that you can flip it out and then only flip out the hole. Well, you see you put this one down right side. Right side. This goes in here. And then you put this in this one. And the, the collar itself gets strapped in that in that seam. So if I tried to use the chair, it would just it would just fuck everything up. So we're not gonna do that. Um, so yeah. Uh, fold this up, finger crease it, and then I'll go over here. That's it. Come show side side. Okay. Here's how you make a bow. Without tying it. This is how you construct a bow. Okay. So you have big tube. I'm sure you can do this with ribbon, um, but I want this better. So you fold it into a little square like this. And then to, you can gather this up and just go. Like you can put a gathering thread in here.
Brown. this together and it's gonna get tacked on right there. Yeah. Right. Right like that. Like that. And then I'll add a snap to the collar and then we can work on the cuffs. Okay, so I know in the Peloton video I mentioned doing this basting trick with the sleeves and the lining so that it stays uh, and doesn't, no, pots don't turn off. But I remember um, the Rose Quinn voice and Brandon really explained how to use the Sophia Owl. I think I just kind of <laughs> called it like the magic flippy or something. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is you're actually just gonna turn it in the lining inside now. And I'm doing, I'm doing the lining uh, because uh, that's you want the lining, you want the sleeve overall to be inside out, um, and then if you do the lining inside out, then the lining will be what's on the outside. Um, and then you can felt the head down. Uh, so you reach up through the lining of the sleeve, wrap onto the arm side of the actual wool sleeve. And then you just Got the sleeves in. I'm much more happy with these sleeves than I was with the first sleeves I put in. I set one sleeve. I like basted it like two or three times and I machine stitched it and I saw how badly I matched the plaid because I didn't. <laughs> like I it just fell out of my brain the idea of matching the plaid um, or the turks. Uh, it was just so bad. It caused me so much pain. I was also just not in it. Good place on Thursday. Did not feel great. Um, and then also, like, it was really full. There was a lot of fullness in the back with giant beads. It's like, ugh, I don't like this. Uh, this the sleeve head of that pattern was 24 inches. My arm size 21 on this. Um, so I just drafted a whole new sleeve. Uh, I, I literally ripped that sleeve out, threw both of them away, drafted a new sleeve, cut new sleeves and they look much better. There's still some issues I have with them, but hey, I can live with it. Uh, so now we're working on buttons, which is our last thing we need to do, and then we'll have some time getting all these basting. I have to take all the basting up at the end. Um, as long as I can keep basting it, I keep it in. Um, so I've already done two buttons, two buttonholes. Um, this 
jacket is going to have seven buttons. Uh, four of which will do absolutely fucking nothing. Um, uh, because... Uh, uh, because the way that double-breasted jacket works is that, um, you know, you have the two rows of buttons. The inner row is fake. So this will button closed like this. And you'll see button here, button here. These two buttons. Those two will actually be functional buttons. You'll also see buttons here and here. These will be sewn onto this side of the jacket and will not be, they won't actually button into a hole. But on the back side of this button, there will be another button here. And that will button into this button hole just to keep this side over here. Um, and then there will also be uh, what I like to call the nipple buttons. And those will be the same distance up and an inch out like where this square is um and those just do nothing they do nothing i'm actually not sure if that's an edwardian yeah it is oh, uh <laughs> i just that's what it says to do in my tethering book and i think it'll be nice um i'm using this copper colored silk button twist from burnley and probridge it is a bit present um but this I think it's really hard to find a matching thread for. Um, but, yeah. And this silk white pull twist um, is great because it's very present. Um, so, this is in my side of spot and pull that I've ever done. Um, but it is. Oh, actually. I can't worry about the walls very pretty. Um, but it, it is very present even with just one strand, so it's easier to match up here lines, see how dense you're doing. Um, and then it's also very thick. It's like several strands of regular silk thread, and silk's already pretty strong, so it is great with using for doing also your buttonholes or just like if you need to do like a lot of like really strong hand work. Um, like I've had some pants that are the same fabric, the same wool, um, the button for the suspenders kept popping off on those. And initially I used cotton thread, and then I used silk thread, and now I've used this silk button on the and it's staying on so much better. Um, I have the pale tail I need to add some on. I got some black for doing that. Um, the only issue is that they come on these cards, and so they come, so when you, you twist, Take them off, and they, like me, are very kinky. Um, it would be kind of difficult uh, to work. So I'm gonna do another buttonhole, and then I only have two buttons of these buttons in this side left. I didn't buy this, this for this. Um, so I pretty sure I bought these buttons so that I could replace the suspender buttons because I couldn't remember what size they were. Um, so I need to go to and get another card of these, um, and then put a button there, a button there, a button there, and a button there. <laughs>
Uh, only 40% of that is because I don't want to go to Joanne's right now. Because um, I could probably find a different one. It's March now. This vlog is over. Bye.